The Trump trial continues today, and there's been all kinds of craziness, which we are going to cover on the program today. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. All right. So first, I'm going to tell you what we're not going to do. It's what everybody else is doing. I'm, I, I'm watching the news coverage of the Trump trial, and they'll, you know, they'll go to the studio. They'll give you a recap of what happened. And then they'll go to one of their uh, legal analysts for, le- for analysis, okay? You can – legal analysis of this Trump trial in New York is useless. The trial is illegal. The judge is corrupt. His daughter took $10 million from the Biden, Harris, and Adam Schiff campaigns, okay? They're making this up as they go. They should all be in jail, the judge, the prosecutors, and everything else. So uh, to sit and, and give legal analysis to a trial that's illegal – where they're making crap up as they go along is so stupid. I'm very disgusted by the media. Now, we got something new here. Listen to this. Uh, This is insane. Uh, It's it's just amazing to me what's coming out. Listen to this. This is in the Daily Mail. Mm. The New York prosecutor in the New York City hush money case against Donald Trump was previously hired for political consulting by the Democratic National Committee. The revelations regarding attorney Matthew Colangelo raises concerns over the perceived uh, politicization of the multiple cases against President Trump, and specifically the first case brought by Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg's office. Uh, Colangelo, according to Fox News, and this is uh, documented in Federal Election Commission records, was paid $12,000 by the DNC in 2018. Um, and, and two, and, uh, separate payments of $6,000 on the same day. I don't know why they did separate mm. payments on the same day to the guy here. They're talking about, um, coll- uh, money problems and collusion and non-disclosures. This guy's a political operative. Um, the description listed by the FEC for the purposes of the payment to the attorney is labeled political consulting. So here you have the prosecutor is paid by the DNC as a political consultant. He, he, you know, and of course the DNC are running against Trump because, you know, he's a Republican nominee. The judge's daughter got $10 million that we know of from the Biden, Harris, and Adam Schiff campaigns. Mm-hmm. I mean, how much more corruption can there be well, in this case? You've always said it's all so incestuous. And I, it's all criminal. I, it, it is, and they're they're all uh, working together. And I think you know they they reported that apparently Trump had paid Cohen over three hundred thousand dollars in personal checks for fees. I think Cohen, well, I, I could be wrong, but it seems to me that he was using these women and you and 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 working with these women to threaten Trump to embezzle money. He had he had a grift going. He was getting these women Mm -hmm. to say and he would go to Trump. I got a woman. She's going to come out and say you slept with her. Just pay her 50,000. She'll go away. And I think that he did that over and over. And it was a way to embezzle money from Trump. I mean, they should look into that and bring and deal with that. There's two things we know. I mean, doesn't that seem that's what happened? uh, Well, let's go in reverse. Today, they have all these checks that Trump gave Cohen. Michael Cohen worked for Donald Trump. Of course, he gave him checks. Okay, and Michael Cohen wasn't a regular uh, attorney for the Trump organization. He was the personal attorney for Donald Trump who did his personal things. And Donald Trump does business and he's in the construction business his whole life in these Democrat cities like New York City. There's a you know, and Michael Cohen was a so, of course, he wrote checks to Michael Cohen. There's there's no scandal in that. They. They act, well, we, we, they, what, what they do is, is they use fancy words like evidence and prosecutor and witnesses and, and court records. And, oh, we have records of, we have records of Donald Trump writing checks to Michael Cohen for, and, and all the checks, by the way, in the records say legal expenses. Right. Yes. Michael Cohen was his personal attorney, personal attorney, not a Trump organization attorney. He may have done work for the Trump organization, right. but he was Trump's personal attorney. Of course, Trump wrote him to. But if they say, oh, it was entered in the evidence today that Trump wrote checks to Michael Cohen, they, they, they try to make it sound as if there's something fishy with that. And what you said, here's what's happened. Okay? I mean, that's, that's with, what it looks last like to week, me. Yes. 
Last week, a couple big things came out in reverse order, okay? At the end of the week last week, Hope Hicks testified. She had nothing, okay? And I'm on the cruise ship. I'm watching MSNBC Friday and Saturday. I'm, I heard Nicole Wallace on Friday. They're talking about, oh, oh, Hope Hicks really, she threw Trump under the bus. She had nothing. nothing. She, she just cried. She said that Michael Cohen called himself the fixer and that he, he would break things and then claim to have fixed them, right? Exactly. Earlier in the That's week. That's exactly right. Earlier in the week, um, I think it was Stormy Daniels' attorney testified. One of the attorneys testified, right, earlier in the week before Hope Hicks. And, that, and one thing came out of that guy. He said Michael Cohen was friends with McDougal's attorney. Exactly. So, so what, what Michael Cohen did is what you said, Kathy. I just want to spell it out a little slower because yeah. this is all – Michael Cohen – was stealing money from Donald Trump. He should go back to prison. I mean, and it's obvious to me this is what was happening. Here's what he was doing. We know he had an affair with Stormy Daniels, according right. to the Gateway Pundit. He knew the attorney for McDaniel. He would go to these women with this plot to, to get Donald Trump to pay, to pay money, and he would get a percentage of it, half of it, a ten, I don't know how much. He'd get some of the money. This is what he was doing. Right. And uh, my, uh, Michael Cohen made all this stuff up. Now, I don't think he went to Donald Trump and said, this woman and that woman's going to make accusations against you. I think that when you're in the construction business in New York City, that there's all kinds of shady stuff. And my, well, and Michael, when you're famous, too, yeah, and, and people come forward all the time. I don't, think it, I don't think he went to Trump and said anybody came forward. I think that— Yeah, maybe not. Um, because he was doing construction business in New York, Michael Cohen handled yeah. all the crap because, you, you know, it's a Democrat city. He it's could corrupt. have told him anything. And, and Michael Cohen, I think the way the relationship worked is he would take care of whatever he had to do for Donald Trump and he would just tell him how much it was. And Donald Trump would write him a check. I don't think Donald Trump knew that it was for Stormy Daniels or McDaniel or any of this stuff that Probably they're saying. Not. Exactly. So, um, I think Michael Cohen went in and wiggled his way into Trump's world. And, but I'm wondering. It's like employee if, theft. If there was somebody before Michael Cohen that did similar things. Because. Why do you was say there that? Ever, well, because why all of it? Wouldn't Trump figure out all of a sudden he hired this lawyer and all of a sudden he's got all these fees for things? I mean, didn't he try, didn't he want to get like a more itemized See, I think he did tell him there were people coming forward sometimes and just pay him off, pay him off. Is that something that was standard in Trump's life? Were there people always coming forward? You know, there's haters. Were there people always threatening to go to the, go to the press and make up stories and this and that? Was that standard in his world? Was no, that a normal I thing? I don't think that was what there happened. anything at any time that stood out with, when, for Trump where he's like, was this guy doing something? When you're in the construction business, in particular in a Democrat liberal city that's run by unions and Democrats, there's all kinds of crap that has to be taken care of to get work done, right? I mean, you probably can't get the garbage trucks to come to your construction yeah. site and, bring, and pick up a dumpster unless you pay off some union guy. So I don't think Trump ever knew anything specific that Michael Cohen did. Maybe. I think Michael Cohen just took care of all the dirty stuff and, and Trump didn't want to know about it. And uh, so far as uh, as the women are concerned, um, I don't think Trump knew anything about Stormy Daniels or McDaniel. In fact, Pecker from the National Enquirer a couple of weeks ago said yeah. he brought up the Stormy Daniels thing to Trump and Trump didn't even know what he was so talking all about. All this was going on and Trump had no clue. Yeah. And, and Michael Cohen kept records that nobody ever saw in case of whatever like is going on now. And, uh, and it, I, what, what we're talking about is obvious. Everyone knows this and they won't say – Michael Cohen, it's a very high-end operation of employee theft. You know, yeah. um, sounds like embezzlement. To it's, me. it's embezzling money, and he was doing it in these in these weird ways with these women. He probably has been doing it in all kinds of other ways over the years. He's he's been embezzling money from Donald Trump in many different ways, and Donald Trump never knew specifically what Cohen was doing. He just knew that he's dealing with unions and Democrats in New York. And things got to get done to get work done. Well, it, the truth yeah. will come out. And he and would just get my, the bill from Cohen. Michael Cohen, you can tell he's terrified. He should be. Of the truth Crook. coming out because that's why he's screaming from the rafters and, and, and pointing the finger at Trump so much. And anytime somebody's pointing a finger at somebody so vehemently, it's because they don't want the spotlight to shine on them. And they're trying to deflect off of them. And I think that's what's happening. Yeah. And, uh, 
but I haven't heard anybody, you know, they're not really, we can't hear what's going on. And we're, I don't, I don't see too many details. I, I get the New York post every day and I'm trying to find some details on it and there's really not too much, but you're right. There's no there there. And I don't, I don't see anybody looking into this with Michael Cohen, but maybe somebody will and look into, but you know, it depends on how he logged everything and how he marked everything. Just legal fees is very vague, yeah. You know, and 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 what can you prove with that? If he just sent Trump an invoice and and blatantly he paid it, but there's no record of anything, then what do you do? I mean, how how do you you know what do you do? And and it's a little bit here and there over a period of years. That's what embezzlers do. They take a little here, a little there, and they think you want somebody in my not immediate family, but kind of in my circle, went to jail a long time ago for embezzlement. They worked for a big company and they would take a little here, a little there, a little there, they, you know, a little bit at a time, a thousand here, 5,000. And they were like in charge of the money of this company. And eventually it got discovered, which it mm-hmm. always does. And they ended up going to prison for a year and a half. But yeah. I think that's what'll happen here. If that's what's going Statue on. Statue limitations is probably up on these crimes. It's been a while. I don't know. Is there a statute on embezzlement? Oh yeah. Yeah, and he, he were he was working some kind of grift, and you and know it's embezzlement. It's yeah. it's a high level employee theft operation. He would go to Trump, he something going, on. and just tell him what the bill, how much he was, and he would just pay him. And I know three hundred and some thousand is a tremendous amount of money. It's a life changing amount of money for most of us. Sure, but for Donald Trump, it's like cigar money, especially if it's. Twenty thousand here, fifty thousand there, ten thousand. He has so much going mm-hmm. on, and apparently some of these checks were written while he was president because Michael Cohen was still his lawyer for the first few years, if not the whole four years yeah. he was – I can't remember. So he was paying him for legal fees, but I just wonder – You know, Trump was so preoccupied with – he has so many balls in the air, and I wonder if he just didn't think about it and just – I think his biggest downfall is he trusts people too much. He's too trusting. He thinks that if if somebody uh, is seemingly trustworthy, Trump just automatically trusts that person because he's a trustworthy guy. Yeah. And I think I think he's realized that that he's trusted a lot of the wrong people. Yeah. And they've screwed him over. And he maybe he's realized that people have their own agenda, and you really can't trust anybody, mm-hmm. especially in politics. Yeah. Yeah. And it really people take advantage. It really burns me that the analysis that everyone's giving everywhere, they don't point out what we're talking about because nobody. The only case that's been proven is that Michael Cohen's been embezzling money and colluding with these sex workers, McDougal and Stormy Daniels, to get money out of Trump. I'm sure Michael he did. Cohen is the common denominator yeah. here, and I'm sure he's been doing it for years on many different things other than this. You know, and I want to talk about this judge. Uh, now Trump was given another fine. It's the 10th one. And he said this will be the last one. And he's going to throw him in jail for the oh, good. the gag order. And um, I wonder, I think personally Trump wants him to put him in jail for contempt. Because I think, and even Cat Turd said this, that Trump uh, wants him to go to j- be in jail because he'll, his, his approval will skyrocket. Because yeah. he'll, he'll look... He wants that visual of being a political prisoner. Yeah. And I think it'll be so shocking to the American people that an ex-president and a candidate for president has been put in. It's never happened. It's never happened. Right. And I wonder what this judge's friends are telling him. Because you know he's hanging out with his friends in the Hamptons on the weekends or in New York at these posh parties. Do they want him because they've got to be going up to him saying, why haven't you thrown this guy in jail yet? You've given him nine warnings, nine fines. Why aren't you doing this? Or are they telling him, don't throw him in jail? That's just what he wants. I bet it's a mix yeah. of both, don't you think? Different well, perspectives. I think that at this level, they, they, I think they just don't have to communicate. They, they got the, they, the, the judge's daughter got the $10 million. I don't. I don't think he's talking to anybody right now. I don't think they have to communicate it. I think it's just a, a known thing. I mean, th- this judge, I, you know— Every – this judge and the prosecutors, they got nothing here. Every single witness has done nothing but clear Trump. Like this guy – this – this t- uh, entering in the evidence, these checks to Michael Cohen. Mm-hmm. All of them, the records show for legal services. Of course he was paying Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen was his personal lawyer. I don't, you know, that's nothing. They got nothing. 
And they uh, and what I wonder is the prosecutors and the judge are they so consumed with their Trump derangement syndrome and hate him so much that they don't see that they have nothing, or do they know they got nothing? I'm right? Not, yeah, I. That's it's a, that's hard a to say. you know what I mean. Does that you know what I'm saying? You don't know there. This Trump derangement syndrome is um, pretty sick. You know, they believe what they want. I mean, they fully believe that Trump hired Russian hookers and had them pee on him. Yeah. I mean, they fully believe yes, that story that Hillary Clinton made up um, because she was so bitter and angry and beside herself with grief for losing. Um, they believe that. They believe everything that's negative that they're told um, by Trump. And and a lot of people believe what they're being told by yeah. Trump. And then and then they'll they meet him or whatever, and then then they'll change their mind and realize they're being lied to. They believe what they want to believe. Now, I want to tell you, I just got back yesterday from our eight-day listener cruise to the ABC Islands, Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao. And – when I went to bed last night mm. and I lay down on our bed yes. with our my pillow mattress topper, it was so amazing. And when I woke up this morning, I was so comfortable, so soft, and I was. It was just amazing. And you know the bed, yeah, you know, the cruise is on the Celebrity Beyond, which is the flagship of Celebrity Cruise Line. It's a luxury cruise ship. I have a luxury cabin, and the bed is an amazing bed, and the mattresses that they have. It cost thousands of dollars. I don't remember the brand. Yeah. But the mattresses cost thousands of dollars. And I'm not saying that the beds are not comfortable. They're comfortable. But they don't even come close to the MyPillow mattress topper. And, you know, our mattress that we have under the mattress topper is not an expensive mattress. It's one of those mattresses that come in the mail and you open it up and then you got to let it air out. And the air it, it, it it's like vacuum packed. Right. You know, so our mattress is not an expensive mattress. No, it came in a box. Yeah. And... um. <laughs> We we put the my pillow mattress topper yeah. on top of it. It's more comfortable than this bed I was fact, sleeping on we, that cost thousands of dollars for the mattress. When we bought the mattress, you even said to me, "Let's not buy an expensive mattress because we have the mattress topper." That's right. So there's no need. You know, it's not a horrible mattress we got, but you know, it's a decent one. But it's not like the where you go to the mattress store and spend two thousand bucks. So you said, "Let's just get a normal mattress. We have the topper." And it's, it turns an everyday, normal, average mattress into a luxury mattress. That's right. So that's right. You really, so that's what's really, and it really is so comfortable. I was sleeping on a mattress for eight days on this cruise that cost thousands of dollars. Yeah. And it does not even come close to the comfort no. with our my pillow mattress topper on our cheap mattress. I was just so comfortable this morning when I was waking up. And uh, I was just, I remember thinking, God, this is just, this bed is so comfortable. It is. Like you just, the problem is you sleep really well, which is good. But some mornings you don't want to get up. No, I didn't want to get up this morning. It was so, it was so, it was so comfortable. This, so the, the MyPillow mattress topper is as much as 50% off with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E at MyPillow.com. It comes in every mattress size there is. Yes. Okay. From the smallest to the largest, uh, all the way up to California King and everything in between that and the twins. It's, it will change your life. So go to MyPillow.com, use our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, and get your MyPillow mattress topper for 50% off. You can use our promo code Kane for all the specials at MyPillow.com, including right now, 50% uh, off the MyPillow, My Coffee, Mike Lindell's Coffee mm -hmm. with our promo code Kane as well. But that mattress topper, I knew how good it was. But being away for eight days and then coming back and sleeping on it, I have an all new appreciation. And we for had it. we had company in our other bedroom, our guest bedroom, while you were gone. And uh, my mom and stepdad were here with me, staying here, and they said it was really comfortable. Yeah, absolutely, and we have one on the guest bed too. And uh, we have so you know, if you have one for your bed, get one for your guest room. That's right. Promo code Kane at checkout K A N E fifty percent off the My Pillow mattress topper at MyPillow dot com. We'll be right back. Are you in the travel industry and want to stay ahead of the competition? Then add Travel Trends with Dan Christian to your podcast playlist. Dan Christian is a highly respected travel industry executive and entrepreneur. He covers the latest trends, insights, and innovations that are shaping the future of travel. From launching global brands to embracing digital tech, he covers everything you need to know for success in today's ever-changing landscape. He has expert guests and insiders who share valuable tips as well as actionable strategies 
that you can implement right away to increase your bookings and engage your customers. Travel Trends with Dan Christian is a must-listen-to essential resource for anyone in the travel industry. Available on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and TravelTrendsPodcast.com. Transform your travel business with Travel Trends with Dan Christian. Tune in right now. Are you a seasoned, successful entrepreneur or an aspiring business owner? Unlock the secrets of success and self-discovery in the business memoir from author Stephen M. Strum, Success and Self-Discovery, available on Amazon. When you read Success and Self-Discovery, author Stephen M. Strum will take you on his journey through his 46 years of entrepreneurial experience, from his humble beginnings in the military to building a successful million-dollar business. Success and Self-Discovery is Filled with practical advice and personal anecdotes, this book is filled with wisdom for aspiring and seasoned entrepreneurs just like you. If you're tired of feeling stuck in your career or you're struggling to make progress with your business ideas, success and self-discovery is your roadmap for success. You'll learn how the author overcame challenges, achieved personal fulfillment, and built a thriving, successful business from the ground up. Readers agree that success and self-discovery is filled with practical lessons and wisdom, and this book will inspire you to be become a successful entrepreneur. You'll learn how to avoid the pitfalls and painful mistakes that author Stephen M. Strum encountered on his road to success. Are you ready to change your life and discover your path to success? Then order your copy of Success in Self-Discovery from author Stephen M. Strum on Amazon, available in Kindle, paperback, and Kindle Unlimited. Are you looking for an opportunity for personal growth and financial freedom? Then contact Marco Torres at matnetwork319gmail.com. That's matnetwork319gmail.com. Marco will answer any questions you have. He has an e-commerce business and is looking for driven people just like you to join his team. If you're ready to thrive and pave your way to success, email Matt at matnetwork319gmail.com. matnetwork319 at gmail.com. Are you looking to add a touch of whimsy and charm to your garden? Look no further than K Designs and Creations on Etsy. At K Designs and Creations on Etsy, you'll find a unique selection of indoor and outdoor garden flower sculptures, all repurposed from dishes. These stunning creations are perfect for Mother's Day or anyone looking to enhance their outdoor garden space. Right now, you could save 25% off during the spring sale, but it will end midnight on Mother's Day. Don't miss out on this chance to snag beautiful, one-of-a-kind pieces pieces at great prices. Visit K Designs and Creations on Etsy at etsy.com slash shop slash K Designs and Creations. Make sure to share this shop on all your social media so your friends can shop at K Designs and Creations too. Spruce up your garden and make Mother's Day unforgettable. Shop now while supplies last. Etsy.com slash shop slash K Designs and Creations. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. There's a new Star Wars show coming to Disney Plus. I, the name I can't oh, I read t- about Tales this. of the Jedi. I don't know. It was something else. They have a non-binary character. Yeah, that goes by they, them. Yeah, they, them. They, the, and the, um, because that's what all the, kids care about they, when they watch Star Wars. They have a lightsaber fight, like the evil Jedi, the Sith, or whatever. They kill the non binary Jedi. As evil as they are, they still use the proper pronouns because they, because <laughs> they're, they're pushing an agenda on Disney. So no matter how evil they are, they don't want to mess up the pronoun. I was watching, uh, when I was on the cruise this last week, I was watching the new episode of Star Trek Discovery. They go to a new planet that the Federation has never visited before, uh, although there was some advanced probe or something. So they have some little, and they're going to beam down to the planet. So before they beam down to the planet, they got to know a little bit about it. The society, because they're going undercover as the aliens on the planet. So they get the briefing and they, they tell you everything about the planet and they recognize three, the three genders. <laughs> and, never, and they recognize three genders. Oh my goodness. This is total brainwashing. There was... Yeah, there was – it is brainwashing. Total brainwashing. On Star Trek The Next Generation, there was an episode about this years ago, and they thought they were bizarre because they had 
other genders other than male and female. Mm-hmm. And they were like a, a freak. Or this was in Star Trek Next Generation. It was like a freak civilization. There right. was a whole, ep- a whole episode about this. Now yeah. we're the freaks. That's right. And uh, I'm, so I'm starting to see for the first time with this Disney thing, children's programming with Star Wars with a non-binary character in children's programming. And you would think Unbelievable. with all the money that Disney lost with – um, oh, Bob Iger uh, just came out and said they don't have an agenda yeah, at all. Yeah, right. Yeah, all the money they lost, which, which could be literally in the billions over the course of time, certainly many tens of millions, over all this garbage over the, uh, since that Zoom meeting got leaked by libs of TikTok a couple years ago, that they would cut this crap out. I remember when Emily was little. You know, Brian and I grew up, like a lot of you, watching Star Wars. I saw it in the theater with my dad and my brother in, like, what, 77? I was yeah, seven years out, yeah. old. And this was right after my parents got divorced, I think. And I went, because I remember my mom wasn't with us. And I went with my dad and my brother. And I thought it was the greatest movie I had ever seen. Yeah. And we went to the movies a lot growing up. You know, going to the movies was a thing. So I went to the movies all the time. It wasn't my first film, but I absolutely loved that movie. And I fell in love with Han Solo and, and all the characters. I just thought it was the greatest movie. I was so excited. So when Emily was little... They came out with episode one. Yeah, Phantom with Menace. Yeah. Phantom Menace with Anakin and- uh, well, That came out the year she was born. The year she was born, right? But Emily, as she got older, had seen, we'd shown her the other Star Wars movies. And of course she loved them. You know, we show them on video. What was the movie you, and Emily's favorite character was Darth Vader. Emily always liked the villains. When she loved the Spider-Man movie, the first one, and she loved the Goblin. That was her imaginary friend. It was the Goblin at dinner. And she always loved the villains. So we got Emily um, a Darth Vader costume. A really nice one. A really nice one. And we got her a really nice lightsaber that lit up. It wasn't plastic. It was glass. I mean, it was a nice one. And she was like five years old. And I can't remember. It must have been this third film that came out, episode three. And by then she had seen all the movies because we had just moved to our house here. So she was like five or six. And you took her to see that movie at the theater. Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith. And she wore her full, she's six years old. She wore her full Darth Vader costume. Like kids like to do the mask and everything. And this was not a cheapy, this was a nice, nice, like it looked real. And her took her red lightsaber, which was about as big as she was. She looked so good. You told me she had people taking her picture and we coming up the to theater. her she thought they and thought there. she was part. That is what Star Wars is about, okay? It's about going and suspending reality and having fun and getting excited about lightsabers and Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader, evil versus good space and all this stuff. And let me tell you, our daughter absolutely loved that costume. And it was, we're so excited to do that. Kids don't have that anymore. And I feel so bad for kids these days because they really don't know what it's like to grow up in that kind of world anymore. There's so much crap being shoved down their throats so much brainwashing going on at school in, in the movies it's horrible. I don't, I don't understand yeah. how Bob Iger can come out and say that they're not pushing an agenda. They are obviously pushing a trans agenda. Absolutely. It's obvious. I don't know why. It's not good for their bottom line. People aren't going to see their movies. Now, this is like a long-running franchise that that's, spans across decades. We're talking, what, 40 years now? 50, Over. 50 almost years 50. almost. Almost 50, 50 years. Because I'm 54. It's 47. It's 47 years. A great franchise. Like everything else, the left touch, they destroy it. They destroy everything they touch. You can't just make a movie anymore, okay? It has to, they have to check all these boxes now. Okay, that's, everybody's got to be a minority. Everybody, we, got, we need a transgender. We need a this, we need that. That's the, that is the first thing they discuss when they put a movie together. Not the story or the setting or the plot or anything else. The first things they go through are, okay, do we have enough blacks? Do we have enough Spanish? Do we have enough gays? Do we have... It is insanity, and that's why movies suck these days. And I feel so bad mm-hmm. for kids. When was the last time a kid 
got excited about a movie. Our daughter doesn't even go to the movies anymore. And Emily loved going mm-hmm. to movies. We used to take her all the time when she was little. I can't remember the last time she told me she went to a movie. I'm serious. It's probably been about 10 years. I can't remember the last time I when went to When you and one. I were growing up, the movies, yeah. man, that was the thing you did on Friday night. A new movie came out every Friday. The movie theater was packed. We'd go to Movies of Plantation. When I was in high school, every week, well, people got excited this, about movies this, because they didn't have an agenda. Well, what, they were just fun. What's going on now is like this new Star Wars show with a non-binary character. I mean, it, this is just insane. I mean, you know, who, who, who wants to watch that? Nobody. Um, so Maxine Waters, let me just play this clip, then we'll talk about it. She was being interviewed on MSNBC. This is a man who we better be careful about. And I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask the Justice Department and I'm going to ask the president to tell us what they're going to do to protect this country against violence if he loses. I want to know about all of those right wing uh, organizations that he's connected with. Who are training up in the hills somewhere and targeting, uh, you know, what communities they're going to attack. Oh my God. So <laughs> she's th- lost her mind. She thinks that there are MAGA groups yes. that are hiding in the hills ready to attack if Trump were to lose. Uh, MAGA wow. people are too busy going to work every day than hang out in the mountains and wait for that. I mean, that's like months away. The, these people um, live on another planet and. You know, Maxine That's Waters, true. who was a, a supporter of the L.A. riot, she's the one she called the she's she was the first person, Maxine Waters, to call the L.A. riots, the L.A. rebellion. Remember that she called the L.A. rebellion and she introduced legislation in the Congress to buy new clothes for all the people uh, in South Central after the riots, even though they had looted all the clothes from all the stores. So she's always been a fringe lunatic. But I all, remember but her all, screaming at people to take it to the streets. Yeah, all the, yeah, yeah, exactly. All these years later, though, um, she's still a freak lunatic like she always was, but her freak lunat- lunacy is now mainstream in the Democrat Party. And yeah. when, when uh, Trump was in office for his first term, she was on television regularly uh, calling for violence Here's and telling thing. people to go in the streets and commit exactly. acts of violence. Yeah, so I, it, you know, the video. only violence— that uh, I know about with it that she's talking about is the what she was calling to happen. Here you have January 6th, which, you know, I wish it never happened because it's just what well, we all do. You know, yeah. it's just it's just a, something we're never they're never going to, you know, no, never going to let it go, let it go. And it was one day, one day, not even a full day. It was a protest. That's all it was. OK. And the minute Trump went on TV and said, go home, it ended. It ended. They left. Here you have these Palestinian kids, and 40%, by the way, are not even students that they've arrested. And they're not kids. They're old. They're, they're, they're not students. cover up the age. Some of them are like, you know, they're all paid organizers. And they are terrorizing colleges. It's going on, what, two or three weeks now? Yeah. Kids can't even go to class. They're overtaking the campuses. They're, they're terrorizing Jews and all this stuff. How come no? it took Biden two weeks, two weeks to say something against it? And the left, how many times have you heard them say that Trump didn't speak soon enough on January 6th, that he took too long? Two, he took two hours. How took he too so long, long, two hours. Biden, it's taken him two weeks to condemn what they're doing here. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't understand this. And, and, and they're terrorizing these people. It's still going on. The only good thing about this is... Um, the kids on the college, the real students are, um, like the, 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 a group of Palestinians like overtook Michigan graduation and came down with flags and stuff. All the, all the actual students were there yelling USA, USA. And what's happening is, is a backlash to this radical liberalism and the Americans and the people that love America. There's a lot more of them than you realize these young kids, which is nice to see are standing up for this country. And that's the only good thing about it is it's actually bringing people together for America. I've seen it. I've seen video of students, um, even on my own alma mater, FSU. They had a bunch of uh, Palestinian people Mm -hmm. and the the students put the water sprinklers on them to get the hell out of here. A bunch of fraternity guys put the American flag back where it was taken down. 
So college kids are rallying together for this country. And that's what these protests are doing. They're, they're, they're making people come together for the United States, which is a good thing to see. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I want to play this clip. This is uh, Jean-Pierre. Under the president's, this president's leadership, President Biden, violent crime is at a nearly 50-year low. Thanks to the extraordinary efforts of law enforcement and community leaders, Americans are safe. Americans are safer from violent crime today than they were a year ago. Vi- what is she talking about? And what, you know, these statistics, I don't, I, there are no statistics. They just make the numbers up. There, there's massive amounts of violent crime, a lot of it being created by illegals. You know, I was in this um, one of the islands over the weekend. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was, it was either Aruba or Curacao. I can't remember which one. I think it was um, Aruba. They have this huge oil refinery, mm-hmm. this massive – and, you know, the ABC Islands are right off the coast of Venezuela. Right. This massive oil refinery completely shut down. It, it almost, almost caused, um, I think it's Curacao. It's in Curacao. Massive oil refinery shut yeah. down. Curacao, they just started doing tourism because this, they weren't a tourist destination really, but because the oil refinery shut down, they had to. It was their big industry. Yeah, because Venezuela and produces a lot of oil. The um, oil refinery was shut down because the United States has a, an oil embargo on Venezuelan oil right now because oh. of the government situation down there. So there's all the, the economic impact of this island is insane. Why is there an embargo by the United States against Venezuelan oil, but we don't have an embargo against Venezuelan people coming into our country. Exactly, And it's, it's simple. I mean, we know why they're bringing them here. They're, re, you know, they're replacing us, but the oil embargo is about helping the people that Obama and Biden love the most, the Muslim people, because the less oil there is, it drives up the Saudi Arabian oil price up. So what what Biden is doing is driving up the price of the oil in Saudi Arabia and helping making the Muslim OPEC nations, even though Venezuela is an OPEC nation, it's not one of the Muslim ones, right? They're driving up the oil for all these Muslim it's – it's a payback to their friends. Everybody knows Obama is running the country, and he has a Muslim agenda. Yeah. And I've known this Everybody from the does. moment he was elected. Yeah, But because he's no longer officially the president, he he can get away with a lot more without – the scrutiny yeah. because Biden's taking all the arrows for him, gladly so. And uh, but he's he's doing everything like you said. It's a pro-Muslim agenda, not a pro-American agenda. And I think I think one of Obama's goals is to flood our country with illegals and um, make uh, Americans um, less and less, and make the illegals more and more. And uh, they're they're going to find a way to let them vote. I'm telling you, that's going to happen. They're they're already talking about getting them IDs and driver's licenses and things like that. But why and, would they? You know, yeah, you're right. And get, get, I mean, when and with Mike Johnson, I mean, you know, it'll happen. I mean, you can't trust him. As I mean, he, he's he's when, the guy wears more makeup than I do. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> more than Ronald Reagan ever wore. A lot. I, mean, I saw him. He was wearing eyeliner. I'm not joking. And blush. And lipstick. You said to me, is he wearing lip gloss? I said, yes. Yeah. Now, listen, we're going to take our last break and be right back. If you're a fan of the girl who kicked the hornet's nest at Ink and Bone, then you'll want to add the book from author S.Z. Estavio to your must-read list. In The Serpent's Bridge, meet Detective Nazario, haunted by her father's unsolved murder, a case that has consumed her for 24 years. She's determined to uncover the truth. The killer, she believes, is still out there, targeting innocent lives. Now, as Mexican immigrants fall prey to a serial killer, Nazario senses a chilling connection. Sanctuary Baptist, known as a hate even for immigrants, holds secrets that could unravel the case. Teaming up with her former lover, Special Agent Blake Huxley, the stakes are higher than ever. Can she stop the murders before more families are torn apart? Is this the same killer who murdered her father and left him for dead under a bridge? Pre-order your copy today on Amazon and follow SZ Estavillo on Goodreads. Put it on your want-to-read list and prepare for a thriller where the past and present collide with deadly consequences. 
Are you and your family prepared for the unthinkable? Picture this nightmare scenario where a nuclear catastrophe suddenly strikes. It'll alter life as we know it in an instant. But there's a guide designed to not only arm you with the necessary survival skills, but also to ignite within you the resilience you will need to flourish in a post-apocalyptic era. After the Meltdown from author Jordan Mitchell on Amazon. After the Meltdown from author Jordan Mitchell is a comprehensive wilderness survival guide that is your key to thriving in the face of adversity. In this must-read book, you'll learn how to secure water, food, and shelter in the harshest of environments. Gain practical advice from real-life stories of resilience that will guide you through the toughest situations. Learn how to overcome physical and mental challenges with resilience and ingenuity. Rebuild communities and foster sustainable living. Preserve the environment for future generations, as well as find hope and purpose in even the darkest of times. Don't wait until it's too late. Order your copy of After the Meltdown from author Jordan Mitchell. Available on Amazon and Kindle, paperback and Kindle Unlimited. And face your future with confidence. After the Meltdown from author Jordan Mitchell, your ultimate survival companion on Amazon. Life can be so stressful. Work, school, kids, the list goes on and on. If you're tired of battling chronic stress and feel like it's a never-ending struggle that's holding you back from living your best life, then order your copy of the new book from author J.T. Caesar, Overcoming Chronic Stress, available on Amazon. With Overcoming Chronic Stress, you'll learn to break free from the chains of stress. You'll understand the root causes of your stress and learn proven techniques to overcome it. Overcoming Chronic Stress is filled with insights, drawn from extensive research and expert wisdom. You'll discover the science behind stress, explore mindfulness practices, master effective time management strategies, and unlock the secrets to building resilience and healthy relationships. Don't let stress hold you back any longer. Seize this opportunity to create a brighter, stress-free life and order your copy of Overcoming Chronic Stress from author J.T. Caesar. Available on Amazon and Kindle, paperback, hardcover, and Kindle Unlimited. It's time to Reclaim your life from the clutches of chronic stress with Overcoming Chronic Stress on Amazon. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. So uh, the trial got out today, this sham lawfare trial in New York, and Trump comes out and thankfully violates the gag order and comes out and talks. So, you know, he's, you know, everybody else can talk that's connected to the trial, but Trump. And he said that today the prosecution said they need two or three more weeks to present their case. Two or three. And and he said it's because they want to keep him off the campaign trail. Yep. This guy would be doing rallies every day of the week. Absolutely. You know, Monday through Monday. He'd be doing them seven days a week, and they're keeping him off the campaign trail. And by the way, that's two or three weeks for the prosecution to complete their case. Then the defense has to come in Jeez. and counter everything. It's going to go on another month. This ca- the, If this were not a crooked judge, he would just dismiss the case. But the judge can't because his daughter took the $10 million. Okay, so this we have this trial going on then there's the one in fort pierce which is a maga judge well that one's falling apart that one that one's i think is going to get dismissed okay Okay, then what are the other two again the atlanta one what what we don't have dates on all these but the the um the documents case is the one here in florida in fort pierce and i was talking about this this morning huge things came out about this okay um the defense for the other guy the uh, valet uh he was having a hard time with the evidence, uh, looking over the evidence, because what uh, Jack Smith had presented to the court didn't match up with the records of the evidence. And then Jack Smith um, had lied to the court, and, and he admitted he lied last at the end of the week last week. Oh, really? Uh, saying that they got the evidence all mixed up. The evidence has been altered. It's not in the same order in which it was categorized. So mm. the evidence has been altered. Which means Jack Smith not only altered evidence, but lied to the court about it. <clears throat> he said he didn't do it. Now he says he did it all in. So he lied to the judge, lied to the court. That's a federal crime. Wow. Oh, look at all these people that have gone to prison for lying to federal agents. It's a federal judge, same crime. Um, and then that photo, this is another thing that came out, that photo of all the documents 
the classified documents on Trump's floor. That and now it's come out that was a staged photograph. They weren't classified documents, and that the FBI they staged this crime scene photograph of these documents that they said were classified. Which we knew it was when we saw it. Yeah, but they did that to get it and leak it to social media so that they can get a look. He's got he's got classified documents all over the place. Look at this. They so they created a fake crime scene. Right. Jack the, the Jack Smith altered evidence. This is insane. But Trump's on trial. Right. So you, you have know. that, the one in New York, and then DC. the funny Willis, what's going on with that? There's nothing new with any of that right now. They're all on hold right now, including the one in DC. The only thing that's got any movement is um, the trial in New York and then these revelations that are coming out of, of Florida. So then Trump came out with his press conference today, yes. and then he talked about the campus protest. Listen. No, it just came out. Okay, now this is a story I talked about on my yes. stream this morning, um, including Bre- Bre- um, um, the Microsoft Bill Gates. Y- yeah, Bill, he's one of them. Uh, Breitbart and many other publications have broken a story that top Biden donors, some of them you've heard of, Soros, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and a bunch you haven't heard of, but big Biden donors have been financing these campus protests. These campus protests are illegal. They're committing violence. They're committing mayhem. They're shutting down. These public universities, mm-hmm. the they're 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 committing vandalism, and to me it seems that if you are funding groups that are doing all these crimes, that you are an accessory to the crimes. Can you imagine if Trump donors, top Trump donors, were financing organizations that were committing violence and vandalism? Yeah, the news the news won't even cover what's going on with the Biden donors. Exactly. And again, like I said before, J6 was a protest that lasted half a day. That's it. This has been going on three weeks now. Colleges are canceling their commencement ceremonies. Kids can't go to class. It's not safe. Yeah. It's violent. They're taking over the schools. And it is being funded by Democratic Donors, people yeah. you know, people you've heard about. That's right. And the media is not doing anything. They're not, they're not, is Liz Cheney going to call a special, a group hearing on Congress to go after these people and tell everybody how dangerous they are? I don't think so. No, no. Nope. No. They just turn a blind and, eye. You know, this- somebody, I want to say real quick, somebody made a really interesting point on the news. Um, they were played a clip. This guy was on last week or something or Sunday, and he said, you know, America, he said, we have a history of defending our, in the name of defending our country, all the wars we've gone into, all the people that have been killed from World War II and and Vietnam and um, uh, the Iraq War, Desert Storm, and then the Afghanistan, he said, Nobody ever says anything. You know, we're allowed to defend what we think we should defend all the wars going on now. And he said, Mm -hmm. but Israel's not allowed to defend their country. That's right. The minute they attack, they they get, they, people go after them for doing what we've been doing for decades, for a hundred years. He said, you know, how many millions of people have been killed with the, the, the bombs and all these things that we've done in the name of protecting America, but they're not allowed that same right to protect their homeland. And and it's like a horrible thing what they're doing. I mean, give me a break. It's yeah. it's hypocrisy. And and this this story of the Biden donors funding these protests are uh, and the media not reporting on it is mm-hmm. insane. I saw a photograph on X today. It was uh, Sidney McCain with Soros's son. Photograph of them together. Wow. What what is what's a Republican hanging out with him? For? Oh, Cindy McCain. Cindy oh, McCain, yeah, John she, McCain's wife. She is <clears throat> she is really in with the the swamp, and she is really in with uh, with the deep state. And, oh yeah, uh, and and she I think she's a big liberal because she hangs out with all these people. She's got a lot of money. She's got a lot of money. She was the Bush heiress or something, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and uh, that's why McCain probably married her. Um, so she is one of these elites that's really in with these Bill Gates and these people that 
it really shows you these rich people have nothing better to do with their money than fund these kinds of things that create civil unrest and where people get hurt. Why can't they do something good with their money? I mean, they just sit back and watch the whole world explode and, and, and get off on it. And they think That's it's right. funny. Yeah. I mean, Bill Gates is a kook. He wants people to eat meat, fake meat. He's a weirdo. Yeah. And he wants us to manufacture meat in a factory, in a lab, and eat that instead. I yeah. mean, he's a nut. You know, and, and, and he's funding this I've told stuff. You this. What, it, what it's like with these Soros, Bill and Melinda Gates types is um, – it, it, it's like in Clash of the Titans when the gods on Olympus have these little exactly figurines right. of all the people and they play with their lives. Yep. That's what's going on here. Listen to this cut of Joe Biden at a campaign stop. By the way, how many of you did really well with that $1.9 trillion tax cut that increased? Really good shape, right? Really changed your, well, you did. Well, that's good. You must, I'm glad to see you're doing well already. And I'm good. But guess what? Sure. If you elect me, I'm not going to have you. Your taxes are going to be raised, not cut. Your tax is going to be raised on cut. Who wants that? Who wants to pay more? What for is anything? he talking about? You know, it, what, could you imagine if McDonald's ran an ad? Well, you come to McDonald's, your value meals are going to go up, not decrease in price. I mean, you know, who who wants to pay more for anything? I don't know. He, he doesn't even make sense. I don't think he even knows what the hell he's saying no. half the time. How, how could he? I mean, that uh, that's all insane. Democrats know how to do is tax and spend, tax and spend. That's what they've always been known for, and for the life of me. I don't understand why anybody votes for a Democrat. I really don't. If you're a Democrat, other than out of pure hatred for the other person, which is how they get you to vote for them. I mean, I hear people that call your show and they never defend Biden or say anything good about Biden. It's just Trump hate, Trump hate, mm-hmm. hate Trump, hate Trump. He's a bigot. He's this, he's that. Right. And then you'll say to them, well, what do you like about Biden? Well, Trump's an, Trump's an a-hole, blah, blah, blah. That is such a stupid way to vote. Uh, I don't understand it, and I, I never will understand the mind of a liberal. Now, I want and, to, um, and I want to tell you when the, I forgot we, to yeah, yeah, go ahead. When that press secretary, who's a disaster, was talking, I just thought of when she was telling how great the economy was. I thought it thought of that scene in Airplane when Leslie Nielsen's nose was growing, yeah. when he was telling everybody on the plane everything's fine. Remember, and his nose was getting mm-hmm. bigger and bigger. That's what I thought of with her. Now I want to. Um, Take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. Some of our Patreon supporters were on the cruise this last week. It was good to meet you all. And if you would like to support the show by becoming a Patreon supporter, there is a link in the description of this and every episode of the program. And our uh, Patreon supporters, there are perks. You get exclusive content that Kathy and I post to Patreon that no one else sees. You also have uh, access to commercial-free editions of all of our podcast episodes if you're a Patreon supporter. And our top Patreon supporters get a live on-air thank you shout-out on each and every podcast. The names you will hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick, Nick, Wesley, Macho, Mike P, Carlos, Paulette, John, Heather, David, Maria in Texas, Richard, Alice, K-Mac, Lee Zepp, Shauna, Constance, George, and Brandon. These are our top Patreon supporters. Thank you all. Again, if you would like to become a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the description of this and every episode. Okay, now I wanted to um, just go back uh, and go talk a little bit about this puppy story with Christy Nome, And the mm-hmm. reason I bring this up uh, again, are two reasons. Uh, one, I was off all last week. I did do a YouTube video on this mm-hmm. um, the, the night before I left on the cruise. But um, Christy Nome's starting to do interviews this week on her book tour to try to resurrect herself from this. And, you know, Good luck. Uh, I told you guys weeks ago when we first saw my uh, Christy Nome, I like Christy Nome, but we don't know much about her. So you, you want to be careful about jumping on board with somebody. And this 14-month-old dog that she violently killed, and then she killed a family goat and threw him in a gravel pit, this story about, well, you know, on a farm, it's different. That story's not going to fly, in my opinion. And like I said, whoever Trump picks to be his running mate, I'm going to support everything Trump does. So if Christy Nome picks, uh, it gets picked by Trump, that's the way it is. But 
I think she's done nationally, politically. For the rest of her life, this puppy-killing story mm-hmm. will forever follow her. And what she did was wrong, okay? Um, the dog killed some chickens. You know, you put a dog down, even in a situation like that, that this, this isn't the 1800s. You, you go to a vet, and they do it humanely. You don't right. shoot the dog there are, in the head. There are dogs that are put down because they're, they, they bite – or they're, you know, they attack some an, an animal. But you or don't a person, shoot it in the head. You don't shoot. But it. you euthanize them exactly. You do it humanely. But now I'm, I'm making a new prediction now since we're speaking of VPs. Well, I well got, I'm going to finish with the thing with Christy Nome first, though, because I want to talk about this. Because I got, and then we'll get into this. I'm get. I, I've gotten a lot of feedback from people today talking about the. Oh well, it's a farm. You don't understand. I know how farms work. I'm not stupid, and and I I have not worked on farms or ranches, but I've been around people and I have hunted with hunting dogs with people that have hunting dogs. And I understand they're not pets, but in America, um, uh, dogs are like people in America. This will follow her forever. I agree. It will never be forgotten. It'll be in her obituary. This is going to follow her forever. I mean, and, and the thing about it is, and th- is that this isn't some accusation that was made or somebody in the town told people, she wrote it very in a lot of detail in her book about how she shot well, Don the dog. Well, Don Jr., the, who yeah. who hunts like she hunts, he, which yeah. I'm I'm against hunting. Sorry, Don Jr. hunts, she hunts, and he said it was unfortunate she did it. Yeah, and he said it was really dumb for her to put that in the book. It was dumb, and he said I don't know who her ghostwriter is, but he must be out to get her. He said because I would never put that in a book, and so that tells me. That that's where the Trump's head is at. I mean, you know, when you when you hear it from the Trump kids, yeah, especially you can pretty much hear the kind of where, where Donald Trump's head is at. And I really think she was in the top three. Yeah, uh, she to blew be picked, it. and I think she blew it with this. And here's who I think he's going to pick. I could be wrong, but this is my prediction. Now, I think he's going to pick Doug Burgum, and he's the governor of North Dakota. He was just at his recent rally in Wisconsin. Uh, he just did an interview talking about Trump and defending him and how great he is and this and that. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to choose him because he's a kind of a low key guy and he's not really on TV too much. He's definitely MAGA. Trump has to choose somebody that can walk into that presidential position. And if you choose somebody that's on TV all the time and is super controversial or divisive that can be a problem but if you choose someone who kind of is under the radar and is more unassuming trump might be thinking you know this might be easier because this guy's not so on tv all the time and a lot of people don't know too much about him yet and he's a quiet guy he's always defended maga and this and that so that is who i think he's going to choose i know everybody's saying he wants a woman I don't think Trump thinks that way. I don't think he needs to check boxes or a black guy or a woman yeah. or this or that. So I'm guessing I'm predicting Doug Burgum, who's the governor of North Dakota, um, will be his choice. Um, but I think it's it's, it's going to be one of three: him, DeSantis, or Rubio. That's who I think the three. One of those three. But I'm going with Burgum. But a lot of people I have talked to in my own personal family and friends want him to choose DeSantis. They're willing to forgive DeSantis. They they don't care about what happened. They said that's just politics. And they really want a Trump DeSantis ticket. They're like, that is the winning ticket. So I wonder if you guys think that. Are you willing to forgive DeSantis? And do you think that's the winning ticket? I don't. I don't like DeSantis at, on, personally. He's a good governor, but I don't know what it is about him. When people meet him, they hate the guy. So he, there's something about him that people don't like. Yeah. That's a problem. He's awkward. He wears high heels. I mean, he's, he's just not, no, he's not genuine. I don't like that. But, you know, I'm not, Trump's not going to be thinking the way I think. He's going to be thinking of somebody who could take over and who's tough and who can, you know, handle it. But, you know, DeSantis is a loser. So as far as the presidential thing goes, I don't know. Who do you think out of those three? Rubio, DeSantis, or Burgum, if those were his top three, who would you think would be his best choice? Yeah, and, you know, I was talking— Who do you think would be his best choice? um, I I don't know too much about Burgum other than he seems low-key, you know? 
Well, um, he's a big mega guy. But I, I was talking about this this morning, and some people get upset with me about this. And you know, I don't know why people get upset about certain. There's no one more mega than me. But pre- President Trump last week met with DeSantis, were, yeah. and and what it came out was that DeSantis. They met in person. DeSantis requested the meeting, and they met. And then President Trump came out and praised him. And and I suggested there you go. this is I suggested that it is it is possible that Trump brings DeSantis into the fold. I'm not saying as vice president, but he might bring him into the cabinet somehow. He might make a deal. And let me, let me explain what I mean by this. And I, I was surprised people got upset with me on this. I'm not saying Trump did this, that he should do it or he shouldn't do it. I'm just saying there's a possibility here. P- president Trump could make a deal with the the Republican establishment to bring somebody in like DeSantis in some position in the cabinet, okay, as a way to try to get the Republican establishment from stopping to sabotage us. You know, the Republican establishment have Republican clubs throughout the entire country that are entrenched part of the Republican Party machine that people don't realize and they are very impactful in local communities, and, and they, can, they can be used for good or evil, and I've seen them used for very bad things, okay? Um, I've had run-ins with them myself, Steve Kane and I, over the years. And it is possible that Trump makes a deal with the establishment Republicans through DeSantis to get them to be more cooperative with him instead of in 100% sabotage mode. And if he did that, I'm I'm fine with it. I tell you, if he made DeSantis his VP, all of a sudden I would think Carl Rove and all those guys would be singing their praises. Would be would be singing his praises because they see that as DeSantis's way into the White House, In which is what they want. Yeah. So they you would hear nothing but good things about that. What a great pick, this and that. And I think you're right. I don't know if Trump's head is there. But I think if he chose DeSantis, I don't know how the voters would feel. They would vote for Trump anyway. And I think Trump knows that. They're going to vote for him no matter what. You know, but I think maybe he is thinking in terms of if I choose DeSantis and maybe they're pressuring Trump to choose him. Maybe they're telling him behind the scenes, look, if you pick him, because he can't get in on his own. If you pick him, we'll back off and we'll support you guys 110%. But does Trump need them? He's got the RNC now. Does he even need the the, the Bushes and them? I don't think no, so. He may not have done so it. So it might not even he, be something not, he needs to he, do. He may not have done it. And I'm not saying he that he might say F you. And I'm not saying that he should. But if he it, it's possible that he would if he thought he needed to. You know, this election is so important. I don't need to tell yeah, you guys. It is. And and Trump is. Go- I've said this many times. He will bring people into the fold that we don't like, and we're going to have. And but he knows what's going on more than us, and we have to back him with whoever he brings in. You know, like this thing with 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 Christy Nome with killing the puppy, and then she shot the goat after, right? And that was tough. She was pissed off when she shot the goat. It didn't die. She was out of bullets. She had to go in the house and get more ammo and come out and shoot the goat a second oh time. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. That's she, what the yeah. Menendez brothers yeah, did to it, their parents. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. They went um, back and reloaded. But if, if Trump picked her, I would forget about that. If, if Trump picks Vivek, I'll forget about this. You know, this, this Soros, He's not gonna pick Vivek. this Soros connection with Vivek here, no. here you got the Soros kid with Cindy McCain, right? We're talking about it. I, I still believe that Vivek is in with the Soros family. They're Vivek's making done. He's out. I, I told you guys that the Soros organization are making inroads in the Republican Party. Yeah. And this photo of the Soros kid with Cindy McCain is proof of what I've been telling you guys. Yeah, that's very interesting. And, I mean, and, why are yeah. those two hanging out together? And Vivek is a part of that. And, you know, I was, I was um, watching Benny Johnson uh, earlier. And, he, you know, he's friends with Vivek, so he's all about Vivek. There's no doubt in my mind, really. I'm like 98, 99% sure that he's still working for the Soros, is, okay, mm-hmm. Vivek. Trump brings him in, I'll support it. You got Trump knows what has to be done for him to get back in the White House and get the job done. And there's a lot of things that he may have to do that we don't like, but we're going to have to go along with for him to get back in there. It's highly possible, as intelligent as Vivek seems, that he could be working for Soros and not even realize it. It's true. You know, that happens too, yeah. where you inadvertently are working for someone for nefarious reasons, but you're 
you don't realize you're what you're that you're doing that. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You're yeah. you're being manipulated. That's right. Um, and getting like, for example, he is in with Trump, or at least he was. He was at Mar a Lago, and remember, he walked in with his wife with Melania and Trump, and he was all in with that. There could be somebody connected to Soros or somebody or Obama or anybody that is fr- being. This is how it works. That has befriended Vivek. And is getting information out of him without him realizing who he's talking to. It's That's called exactly it's right. called spies, spy mm-hmm. operations, psychops, things like that, and mm-hmm. and and double agents and all this stuff. It goes on within our own government. Politics is to me the nastiest business to get into. It is absolutely cutthroat, heartless, soulless, godless. I don't know why anybody would want to go into politics other than they love power and except for Trump. And there are some people who really want to help the country. Those are the, that's the minority. Most people go into it because they love the power and the, the, the opportunities that being in politics presents to you as far as money. But, but you know, the vet could be just somebody, I, I don't see him hanging around with Trump anymore. Have you seen him at the rallies? Is he hanging out with them? Lately, I haven't seen um, him lately. There was a, a photo with Trump with a bunch of Republicans. I've seen him in a photo, but he was kind of in the back. He, oh, he's not as prominent he's as he was. He's moved off the stage. Yeah, well, he, was, he, was a, he wasn't on the side, but he was in the back. You know what I mean? So he was like stage back. Do you yeah. think Trump will do anything with him? People don't really talk about him anymore. I mean, he goes on Twitter and just, says just things. Just Benny and, Johnson. I, I, and I never see him on Fox or- You don't see him as much. Anywhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, before- You'd flip around and you'd turn on Fox and he was there. Yeah. And yeah. now he's not. He's been sidelined. Um, now, don't forget, you know, you guys, if you'd like to support the program, support all the content, the radio show, the YouTube channel, and of course, this great podcast, the Brian Kirk Show podcast, go to mypillow.com, use our promo code Kane at checkout, K A N E, and load up. There's huge sales going on. Uh, I mentioned the MyPillow coffee, Mike Lindell's personal coffee, 50% off with our promo code Kane. And you know the the uh, my pillow, my coffee, Kathy. It comes in uh, ground, whole bean, and even like the curate cups. And there's and there's different blends and things like this, so you can find yes. the perfect coffee for you, fifty percent off. And I also was uh, telling you guys that my pillow mattress topper, fifty percent off right now with our promo code Kane at checkout. K A N E. It comes in every mattress size. It will change your life. You will get a night's sleep like you've never had before each and every night with the MyPillow mattress topper, and it's 50% off uh, with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E at MyPillow.com. Kathy and I have been sleeping on the MyPillow mattress topper since Mike Lindell started offering them. And I got to tell you, that mattress I slept on this weekend, or this last week, Kathy, on the cruise is probably one of those $5,000 mattresses. Yeah. It doesn't even come close to the comfort no. of our cheap mattress with the MyPillow mattress topper on yeah. it. So get yourself a MyPillow mattress topper. If you already have one, get one for your guest bed. Get one as a gift. It is life-changing. Promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, at MyPillow.com. We're out of time, but we will be back next time. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We will talk to you next time.